4. It is called the righteousness of faith. Romans 4, 13. Not that faith is righteousness or imputed for it, or is the matter of a justifying righteousness or any part of it, but because the righteousness of Christ is revealed to faith, and that lays hold on it, receives it, rejoices in it, boasts of it. 5. It is called the gift of righteousness, and the free gift, and the gift by grace. Romans 5, 15, 16, 17. Because freely wrought out by Christ, and freely imputed by God the Father, and faith is freely given to receive and to embrace it. 6. It is called a robe of righteousness, a garment down to the feet, which covers the whole mystical body of Christ. Isaiah 61, 10. Revelations 1, 13. It is signified by gold of Upha, clothing of wrought gold and raiment of needlework, setting forth the preciousness of it. Psalm 55, 9, 13, 14. It is said to be change of raiment and the wedding garment. Zechariah 3, 4. Matthew 12, 12. Yea, the best robe. Luke 15, 22. A better robe than Adam had in Eden or the angels in heaven. There's at best being but the righteousness of a creature and that losable as the event showed. But Christ's righteousness is the righteousness of God and an everlasting one. It may be rendered the first robe, being first in designation and in provision of the covenant of grace. Though Adam's robe of righteousness was first in wearing and use. 6. The effects of justification by the righteousness of Christ may be next considered, which are as follows. 1. An entire freedom from all penal evils in this life and in that which is to come. Justified ones are not free from all evils. They have their evil things now, as Lazarus had, but they are not brought upon them by way of punishment. Afflictions are evils in themselves, being not joyous but grievous, but then they are not penal ones. They are fatherly chastisements. They are fruits and evidences of the love of God to them and not of his vindictive wrath. Revelations 3.19, 1 Corinthians 11.32 Death was threatened as a punishment for sin and is the just demerit of it and as such is inflicted on unrighteous ones. But is no penalty of evil to justify ones. It is their privilege and not their punishment. 1 Corinthians 3.22, Revelations 14.13 And therefore their death is desirable even by wicked men, as it was of Balaam, nor will any penal evil befall the justified ones after death. For, being now justified by his Christ's blood, they shall be saved from wrath through him. From wrath to come, the vengeance of eternal fire, shall any penal evil be inflicted on them here or hereafter, it would highly reflect upon the justice of God in punishing twice for the same offences, once in their surety and again in themselves, since the chastisement or punishment of their sins has been laid on Christ and he has endured it. Therefore it would be lessening of the value of Christ's satisfaction as if it was not made to full content. Should punishment be inflicted in any degree upon those for whom it is made? And it would be contrary to the gospel declaration that they that believe in Christ are justified and shall not enter into condemnation. Two, peace with God is another fruit of the effect of justification. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Romans 5, 1. Peace with God is made by the blood of Christ and reconciliation by his death. And besides that, there is a peace of conscience which is had by a way of believing and through a comfortable sense and perception of an interest in the righteousness of Christ, the effect of which is peace and quietness. Isaiah 32, verse 17. 3. Access to God through Christ, for having a comfortable view by faith in the interests in the righteousness of Christ 
unto justification. It follows, by whom also we have access by faith, into this grace wherein we stand. Romans 5.2 Access to God as the God of grace, to him as on a throne of grace, to all the blessings of grace which come from God through Christ and through the blood and righteousness of Christ. Justified ones have great freedom, boldness and confidence to go to God and present their supplication to him for what they want, not for their righteousness sake, but in their requests, making mention of the righteousness of Christ and only pleading the worth and virtue of that. For acceptance with God through Christ follows upon justification by his righteousness. There can be no acceptance with God upon the foot of a man's own righteousness, which cannot render him acceptable to God, but through the righteousness of Christ. There is an acceptance both of persons and services, first of persons and then of service, as God had respect to Abel, and so to his offering, and accepted it, so he has respect to the persons of his justified ones. As considered in Christ, he has respect to them, and is well pleasing with him, and with all that are in him. They are accepted of God, in the beloved, being chosen with the robe of his righteousness, and the garments of his salvation, and their services being done in the strength of Christ, and through faith in him, to the glory of God by him, and their spiritual sacrifices being offered up by him, their great high priest, they become acceptable to God through him. 5. The well-being of God's people here and hereafter depends upon their justification, and is a consequent of it. Say you to the righteous, one that is justified by the righteousness of Christ, that it shall be well with him. Isaiah three ten. It is well with the justified ones in life. Be it with them as it may, all is well with them and for the best. All things work together for their good, adversary, prosperity, what they have of worldly things, though but little, Psalm 36, 37, 16, Proverbs 15, 16, 17, are blessings to them. It is well with such and one at death. He has hope in it and rejoices in hope of the glory of God. Peace is the end of the perfect and upright man who is perfectly righteous through the righteousness of Christ imputed to him and it is well with him at judgment. He has a righteousness that will answer for him in that time to come and he shall have an abundant entrance into the everlasting kingdom and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and it will be well with him to all eternity he that is righteous will then be righteous still and ever continue so and shall go on into everlasting life. 6. Glorying or boasting is another effect of justification, not in a man's self, in his own righteousness, not of his duties, service, performance, nor of blessings of goodness enjoyed through his own merit, nor of heaven and happiness as his own acquisition. All such boasting is excluded by the doctrine of justification by faith in the righteousness of Christ, but which are justified in Christ, glory in him in whom they are justified, and the glory in this he is of God made to them righteousness. Isaiah 45.25, 1 Corinthians 1.30 7. Justified ones have an undoubtable title to eternal life. Hence, justification by Christ's righteousness is called justification of life because it entitles to it, and such are made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, are heirs of the inheritance and incorruptible and undefiled and reserved in the heavens, and shall be possessed of it. Romans 5.18, Titus 3.7, 4, 8. Certainty of salvation may be concluded from justification. Such as are justified shall most assuredly be saved from wrath. There is an inseparable connection between justification and glorification. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. Romans 5, 9 and 8, 30.